Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and my kitchen. Today I'm going to be fermenting these radishes that I got from the garden. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably know that this is my favorite vegetable that I grew this season. I had a pretty abundant harvest of radishes and what was great about them is that they started um, being ready for harvest about five weeks after planting. I am in zone seven in West Texas and Generally, these seem to be more of a cool weather crop, but they were planted in the middle of summer and they still did very well. The reason why I am fermenting these is because I'm trying to practice um, the art of fermentation as much as possible. And since I have so many radishes, I don't want to eat them all at once. I want to go ahead and save those um, for the upcoming weeks. So what I'm doing here is I already washed the radishes and I'm currently cutting off the leaves of them. I'm not going to discard them, but I'm gonna keep them because they are very healthy for you. They're high in vitamin C, vitamin A, B6, potassium. They have a lot of antioxidants, which are really good for destroying free radicals in the body. So they're definitely not gonna to go to waste here. In our household, we are all about getting as much nutrition as we can from the food that we eat. So that's why, you know, once I figured out that there was so many health benefits in radish greens, I decided there's no way we're going to toss these out. We are going to use these in recipes. And I've been loving them in stir fries or just steamed and used as a side vegetable. In case you're wondering what's in the white pot to the left of me, that is wheatgrass that I am growing. I love growing wheatgrass because again, it's super healthy for you. I either get some and I put it into um, some smoothies um, or you can even add it to your pet's food. We have two dogs and they absolutely love having it. Now what I'm going to do is just take those greens and put them aside and the radishes are going to be cut up into smaller slices. If you're new to fermentation, it basically is a way to preserve food. It's an ancient method. Basically what you need is some purified water and some salt, and then you combine that with a vegetable. Um, I'll be showing you that in a few minutes here, but basically that's what you do, and you preserve a lot of enzymes, and you have a lot of good bacteria that's formed in the process, making it basically a superfood for you. Next, you're going to want to mix in some sea salt in some purified water. Here I have a um, quart size wide mouth mason jar, and I'm currently putting in two and a half tablespoons of Redmond's Real Salt. You can use Himalayan salt or other sea salts, but this is my salt of choice. And once you have it in there, make sure you mix it up really well because you want that salt to dissolve as much as possible. This mixture is actually called the brine, so that's your salt and water mixture. Here are the other items that I have for my fermentation process. I have another wide mouth jar. I have the band uh, to screw on top. I have a weight that came with a kit that I will share down below. And I have a self-ventilating lid. So um, that helps so that I don't have to burp the jars and the um, pressure that builds up during the fermentation process can release on its own. What I'm doing now is fumigating all of um, the items that I have here, including this um, acacia wood packer that came with the kit that I did buy. Um, you really want to make sure that all of the pieces that you're going to be using are sterilized because you don't want any bad bacteria um, introduced into your fermentation. You want everything to just be a really clean slate and then from there, any bacteria that is formed during the fermentation process will be the good bacteria that you want. If you're going to sterilize this way, make sure you're careful because I kind of burned myself in the process of doing that, but I was okay. Next, once the jar cools, you're gonna go ahead and start putting your radishes inside and any other vegetables or herbs that you want to add. I have some chopped up garlic that I'm going to be putting in as well, just for a little bit additional flavor. I love garlic. I try and cook with it all the time and add it into anything that I'm um, making, so it's definitely getting into this fermentation. So I'm just going ahead and kind of filling in the jar with as much radishes as possible. You want to fill it up to pretty close to the top. Um, don't worry, you'll be able to pack things down more with the packer and then make a little bit more space if you have some extra vegetables on the side. 
So what I'm doing here is I have my packer and I'm just kind of pressing down and condensing the contents of the jar. You want to pack things in um, really, really tightly. Once that's all pretty packed up, go ahead and get your brine and start adding it into the jar. You want to make sure that you cover up all the vegetables inside. I actually also decided to add in some red onion into uh, the jar just because with the radishes and the garlic, the pieces are pretty small and I didn't want to risk any of the little pieces floating up to the top um, and getting above the weight, which could actually um, introduce um, bad bacteria growth. So with the onions on top, I feel like it will help keep everything submersed under the brine, even um, once the weight is put on top. Now I'm just packing everything in a little bit more just to make sure that everything is tight in there with the extra onions that I added. And then now I'm going to take that weight and um, put that on top. It is a glass weight and it does a really good job at keeping everything submersed under the brine. Next, I'm taking that ventilating lid, the self-ventilating lid, and putting it on the top. Love these self-ventilating lids because it just really helps to alleviate the pressure that's built up, like I said before, and you don't really need to worry about releasing that pressure every day. It just does it on its own. Next, I have the band and I'm drying that off and I'm just going to go ahead and screw it onto the top of the jar. Once that is screwed on tight, I'm just making sure that the top of it is all dry. I'm using a clean uh, dish towel to do that. And there you go, it's all done. Don't forget to write down the day that you start your ferment. After this, I'll go ahead and store it in an area away from direct sunlight. I'll check it in seven to 10 days and check that it smells good and tastes good. And if it does, I'll store it in the fridge. That way it'll stop the ferment process. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.